Now, Felicity Ward is a multi-award winning Australian stand-up comedian, a writer and an actor. And she's here for the New Zealand Comedy Festival, which we all love. She's also one of the few people who can make their own toilet troubles and struggles with mental illness seem, well, genuinely funny. It's great to have you here, Felicity. Hey, it's great to be. I just realised I'm probably a bit too relaxed. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, like, I'm one step away from feet on the table here. Hey, it's been done before. I'm a little well. bit worried, but the viewers at home, the camera's <laughs> right there. Actually, that's a very, very valid point pay extra to get that shot. <laughs> it's a special after hours show. Welcome to morning television. <laughs> hey, now Felicity, I must ask you, you were a waitress, uh, actress, and then you were a sketch comedy, and then you did production, a production manager. Yes. What was the, what was, what encouraged you to step into stand-up comedy? I, ha I didn't want to do it. I had no interest in doing it. Um, some of you might know uh, a, a guy called Heath Franklin who plays a character called Chopper. Chopper. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Wow. He's, oh, he practically lives in this country. I know. I don't know if he is in a, uh, he's more or less given in his passport for Australia. Yeah. I think he much prefers it here. Understandable. New Zealand is what Australia wishes they were. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you heard it here. We do. I mean, we really do. Um, don't say that back in Australia because I'll get bashed. Um, which is why I'd prefer to be New Zealand. Anyway, I, um, I was his tour manager, so we did a sketch show together, which Chopper was on. That was one of the characters. And then at the end of it, I didn't really know what to do and because I didn't have a job and um, so our, our producer was like, I'm going to produce Chopper as a tour. Do you want to be the tour manager? I'm like, man, I don't have a lot going on, so I may as well. So I was like a tour manager for two years and then, um, and then I got asked if I wanted to do a spot on my friend's live show at the Melbourne Comedy Festival in 2008. She's like, it doesn't have to be stand-up. I'm like, good, because I was never going to do stand-up. And so I was going to do this thing where I... I um, asked an audience member trivia questions but I bought these toy tanks that would electrocute you oh, so that sounds like fun the idea would be if they got it wrong that I would get to electrocute them but if they got it right then I would get electrocuted All right so I ordered them and then they turned up on the Friday and I was on the phone so I just said you know bring them up to the apartment and then I never saw them again they just got stolen I don't know by the postie or by someone in the building but I didn't have these toy tanks and I couldn't get them anywhere else oh, so what did you do for the show then? so I just had to do 12 minutes of stand-up so that's why I did my first stand-up <laughs> spot is because the thing that I was supposed to do got stolen Wow okay yeah, yeah. that's a fascinating start and yeah. now look at you all over the world look at me now hey? on the oh, cafe yeah, I, right. Right. I mean does it get bigger than this no, I don't think so. so this is pretty much you've reached you know yeah. you, you were here now you're up here. This is peak life. Now I'm you, gonna I'm gonna quit after today. Actually. Yeah, you probably should. Don't bother with the rest of the show. Yeah. Um, you live in the UK. Yes. You've been there for a few years now. How does your Australian sort of ness come across there? Do you find you have to adjust your comedy at all? I don't yeah, have, you'd be fine. I don't have to adjust it. There's just like a there's a sense of when you're Australian, you walk on stage, and English an English audience will say, "We made you. I don't know why." <laughs> we would listen to anything that you have to say. So you've got to work a little bit harder. And there okay. is still an element of sexism uh, in UK audiences where you still can go to a club and people will see a woman and they'll get up and go and get a drink. So that's really? fun. Oh. That's really fun, guys. What, so what's the show about? Because I know you talk about irritable bowel syndrome. I'm going to make you say that. Yeah. <laughs> One more time. Oh, oh, <laughs> then say anonymity for me. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Irritable bowel syndrome. Very great. Anonymity. Oh, oh look at him. You've got to show deck for tomorrow. So I want to say, so tell me about your IBS. IBS. See, there you go. Um, so I've had IBS for a very long time, but what I didn't know until I uh, was 30, so I got diagnosed diagnosed with anxiety, uh, generalised anxiety and evolving depression when I was 30. And uh, evolving depression, I hadn't heard that before. It's just nice to have a doctor that believes in you. you know? <laughs> uh, one looked at my mental illness and thought, that thing's got potential. Uh, <laughs> I thought you said revolving from yeah. it. Yeah, I've got revolving right around around. depression. <laughs> well, that's kind of the nature of it. We're like, I'm fine. I'm not fine. <laughs> I'm kind of fine. I'm struggling. Um, I didn't know that they were linked. So that's the only reason that I talk about the toilet stuff, because I was so embarrassed about it, is when I was looking up the symptoms of anxiety, uh, one of them is a fear of losing control of your bladder or bowel. And I'm like, uh -huh. I've got both, double winner, don't be jealous. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so then I, I made a documentary a couple of years ago that was about um, mental illness. And I realised, we started writing stand-up for the documentary and I went, there's actually heaps of material here. So that's just what I wrote my next show about. So it's therapy, really, and learning at the same time and having a laugh. Because I've got a mate who can't 
go, oh, I don't, can I talk about this? Yeah, go I've, on. I've got a friend who can't go number twos at work. Yeah, I, oh, that's really common. Heaps of people can't do that. Yeah. I'll go anywhere. I don't have a choice. But, <laughs> but that's I'll actually do it behind really, that, that pot plant if you need me to. <laughs> that is actually really, really common. You know, there's, um, the, oh, there's so many stories I could tell you about people going to toilets and, uh, toilet and, and workplaces, but I won't go there. Yeah, it's actually, do you know, I, I don't know if this is a generalisation. It's mostly men that won't go, that I know of, mm -hmm. that won't go, um, that won't do <laughs> that. The meatloaf. I won't do that <laughs> in um, public places, whether it be the workplace or public toilets at all. They're just like, nah, I'm just, I'm, it's because, I'm cramping. Uh, it's because you. <laughs> Oh, no, I can't anyway, explain it. Because because men are disgusting it. Yeah. when it comes to the toilet. Men are disgusting. That is absolutely 100% correct. Hey, Only when it comes to the toilet. It has been, well, it's been Thank fantastic having you in the studio with us. And tonight's show in Auckland is going to be interpreted into New Zealand Sign Language. Uh, comedyfestival.co.nz for information on all of the tickets. Yeah, nice. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, over to you, Holly.